Nothing beats a great roast dinner. And tonight, I'm gonna to show you a traditional old favourite, as well as something a little bit fancy. Tonight on Home Cooked, Julie's tips and tricks for the two best roasts ever. This is the fun bit, because you get to use your hands. With some mouth-watering side dishes. Squeezes out like toothpaste out of a tube. And it smells gorgeous. And a dessert that never fails to impress. It's as easy as anything, but really yummy. Plus actor Roy Billing carves it up in the kitchen. You don't get any pudding until you've eaten your meat and your greens. Hi, and welcome to Home Cooked. I don't think you can go past a good roast dinner. In fact, one of my favourite childhood memories is a roast dinner at Nan's house. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make two very different kind of roasts, both easy and both delicious. And I'm going to kick off with my take on a beef roast with a delicious side. I'm going to show you how to do a roast beef. And it's not your usual roast beef because I'm using an eye fillet of beef, which is quite an expensive cut. So you'd probably have this for a special occasion, a dinner party or something like that. It doesn't take anywhere near as long to cook as your traditional roast, so it's a nice easy one to do. First of all, I'm going to make a marinade to give the beef a beautiful, rich, spicy flavour. I'm going to put in some fennel seeds, ground cumin, a tablespoon of coriander seeds, two tablespoons of chilli, which you can leave out if you don't like spice. Then three cloves of chopped garlic and a good quarter of a cup of Dijon mustard. Then I just mix it all together until it forms a nice dry paste. I'm just going to spread that all over the roast. This is the fun bit because you get to use your hands. The eye fillet's a really tender cut. It's got hardly any fat in it. It's really juicy and delicious. So it's not like your usual topside roast or bowler roast that take quite a lot of cooking. It's just a really lovely piece of meat. It's the same cut of meat you'd use for a filet mignon. Okay. I'm gonna put that into a snap lock bag to marinate. The reason I like to put it into a plastic bag and snap it shut is because you can get all the air out of there and it holds the marinade right up close against the meat. It means that you've got that beautiful flavour going all the way through your roast. Seal the bag and pop it into the fridge for at least six hours or even better, 24 hours. The longer the marinade is on the beef, the more delicious it's going to be. So it's marinated for a few hours. I'm just going to brown it in a pan little bit of oil into a hot pan and the reason that I'm doing this is to seal the meat which will keep the juices in as it's roasting. So I do that on quite a high heat on all sides. I'm not aiming to cook it through here just to brown it. I can really smell those spices toasting in the pan. It smells really lovely. If I was cooking a bigger roast, an awkward sort of a joint, I wouldn't brown it in the pan. The way I would seal it in would be to throw it in quite a hot oven and then turn the temperature down. So now that it's browned off, I'm going to put it into the oven. And depending on how you want it cooked is how long you put it in for. For rare, it's around about 20 minutes. For medium, about 30 minutes. And for well done, about 40 minutes. It all depends on the thickness of the beef and, of course, your oven. So the beef's roasting and I'm getting on with the green beans with roast garlic and almonds. What I'm going to do is put the garlic into the oven to roast and I'm going to put the almonds in there as well. So I wouldn't do this dish unless I already had the oven on. So I've chopped the top off this head of garlic. Just going to put a few drops of oil on. And some almonds also, lovely slivered almonds. Spread those out on some baking paper on a tray. I'm going to put that into the oven. The garlic will take half an hour, but I'll need to get the almonds out a fair bit before that. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just cutting the tops off these beans and leaving the pretty little taily bits at the end. This is about 400 grams of green beans. Once the beans are topped, just add some butter on top and it'll melt through nicely as they cook. And pop that into the microwave for three or four minutes, depending on how strong your microwave is. I don't put any water in with my veggies when I microwave them because they're mainly water. So the water in them creates enough steam to cook them. So the beans are cooking, the roast is nearly ready. Come back after the break and we'll serve it up. And a dessert that never fails to impress. It's as easy as anything, but really yummy. And later, Julie shares her cooking tips with Underbelly star Roy Billing. I think it's an important thing to have a relationship with Butcher, if you know your Butcher. <laughs> For best results, I never compromise on the quality of my ingredients. That's why I always buy Glad, not the imitations. So whether I'm baking, sealing in freshness, roasting, making the boys lunches, or taking out the rubbish, I always insist on Glad, because nothing else compares. You can always count on Glad. Glad are proud sponsors of Home Cooked with Julie Goodwin. You can always count on Glad. Welcome back to Home Cooked. Tonight I'm doing a lovely marinated eye fillet of roast beef. I've done the beef and it's resting here. Next I've got my roasted garlic, which has come out of the oven and cooled off a bit. And if you watch, that just squeezes out like toothpaste out of a tube. and it smells gorgeous. It's really nutty, sort of a soft flavour rather than the harsh flavour that garlic can be when it's raw. And that mashes up beautifully with a fork, just like that. I'm gonna to toss it through these hot beans. Put that into a warm serving bowl. And scatter it with these lovely toasted almonds. So that's a great accompaniment to the roast beef. Look at that. We'll just carve that up and with some really good horseradish cream or some hot English mustard, beautiful meal. So that was a pretty special beef roast and here's a special dessert to go with it. my sticky date pudding, I'm just creaming together some butter and some brown sugar until they're pale and fluffy. The next thing I add is some golden syrup and mix it all through. Then I add two eggs, making sure to beat them thoroughly one at a time. And lastly, I fold in the flour just a little bit at a time until the batter is smooth and all the lumps are gone. This is where the dates come into it. I've got a couple of hundred grams of pitted dates in some boiling water or some hot water. And I'm just gonna blitz those with a hand mixer. Now to the date mixture, once it's nice and pureed like that, I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of bicarb soda. And once I put that in, I've got to mix it through really quickly and put that straight into the batter here. This batter actually has very little butter in it. You get most of your moisture from those beautiful pureed dates. So the lovely date puree is well incorporated into the batter. And I'm ready to put that into a greased tin I've lined the bottom of that, it just helps to get it out at the end. And that's going to go into the oven at about 170 degrees for around about half an hour. So while the pudding's in the oven, I'm gonna make this beautiful butterscotch sauce. It's as easy as anything, but really yummy. I just need a bit of cream, a bit of golden syrup, 
fair bit of butter, and a little bit of brown sugar. And there's no trick to that whatsoever. You just bung it all in a pot, bring it to the boil, and boil it for about three minutes. And that will come out the most delicious caramelly butterscotch sauce. Keep an eye on that as it's boiling away because it can froth up if you don't keep stirring it. Now, while I normally like to taste the things I'm cooking, especially when they're caramel flavoured, you don't taste this because boiling sugar is extremely hot and quite dangerous. So I have to wait till it cools down. This sort of sauce could also be made for pancakes or poured over ice cream. So that'll thicken up a bit as it cools. I'm going to get that pudding out of the oven and I guarantee you this is a dessert that'll have them coming back for more. That's really moist and delicious. Stick around because after the break, Aussie actor Roy Billing is going to come in and help me cook a traditional roast the way your mother used to make it. And Julie's secret for a silky smooth homemade gravy. In my family, it's not a lamb roast without a beautiful gravy. 